Okay, here we have an Eversolar inverter and we have a look on the screen. You see it's coming up with isolation fault and you can see the alarm light, the red alarm light is on and the green light for uh, running light is not on at all. Um, so the isolation fault means that the inverter has detected a fault and there's a, there's a couple of things that an, an electrician would need to do to test it further. However, with a fault like this, it's always best to try rebooting the system and see if that actually clears the fault or not. So we're going to try that now. And uh, to do that, we, it's always important that you follow the shutdown procedure. And what we do is we turn off the solar supply main switch, which is located in your switchboard, or the inverter AC isolator. In this case, we've got an inverter AC isolator right here, so we'll turn that one off. And then we turn off the PV ray DC isolator located at the inverter. So that's over here on the left hand side, so we'll just throw that off as well. And we'll let that system shut down altogether. Now, um, it, this can sometimes be an issue which uh, is an internal fault with the inverter, or it can be a problem with the uh, wiring to the system. So you're really going to need, uh, if, if uh, rebooting the system doesn't fix it, to, to get an electrician to have a look at it. So we'll just try, um, rebooting it now and see how we go. Now the, the the startup procedure doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one you turn on first. We're just going to turn on the AC here and then on the DC and we'll see if we get any changes there. we we'll give it a few seconds and it should at least attempt to start up. Here we go. So it's waiting. Attempting to start up now, but there you see, see again, it's come up with the isolation fault. So if your inverter is doing exactly the same thing after trying to reboot, uh, you are going to need to get a solar accredited electrician to come and have a look at your system. Like I said, it could be an internal fault with the inverter, or it could be a fault with the cable in the wiring uh, connecting to the inverter. Now. In, if it is a war ever a warranty claim, a couple of things you are going to need to know, and that's the um, model number of the inverter and the serial number of the inverter, which we can find on the right hand side of the inverter here. In this case, this inverter has been installed out in full sun and the, the actual data label is all perished away. The only thing that you can actually see is a serial number, so we can't actually see from there what model the inverter actually is. We can see the serial number, that's all. But uh, we can find the inverter model number from off the screen. So we see the isolation fault there. You press this button here and we can scroll through a few settings. A few of the readouts. And then you see TL1500AS. So this is an Eversolar TL1500AS. Now in this case here, uh, I have checked the uh, feeds into the inverter and have found that it is definitely a problem with this Eversolar inverter internally. So this is going to be covered under warranty. Now if this was happening and it didn't end up being an inverter issue and it was outside of, out of warranty, so the warranty is five years from, from the date of installation, then I would recommend rather than trying to get the inverter fixed, replace the inverter with a good quality replacement unit with a full new warranty. Otherwise, you're just uh, repairing, uh, throwing good money at something which is not covered by warranty, and there's, there's not a lot of point doing that. So, look, I um, hope that's uh, been helpful for you. And uh, if you're on the Gold Coast or Southeast Queensland, Gold Coast Solar can certainly help you if you ha are having this issue. If you're elsewhere, I recommend talking to a local solar expert. Thanks very much.